Dr. Hellman for uh, inviting me to give a talk. Um, so today I'll talk about the cycle structure of random, random parking functions. So the brief outline of my talk is I'll introduce what parking functions are, talk about some history and previous results, and then we'll introduce these um, combinatorial constructions um, that serve as a bridge between combinatorics and probability. So these are the parking function, multi-shuffle and parking completions. And then I'll talk about the expected number of case cycles and show that the asymptotic distribution of cycle counts converges to independent Poisson. Um, and the proof of this involves science method via exchangeable pairs. And then we'll end with some further directions and open questions. Okay, so what are parking functions? So these are um, combinatorial objects with wide reaching applications to combinatorics, probability, and they started off in computer science. And so what we wanna do is explore them by asking, what does a typical parking function look like? So the way we usually describe them is as follows. So we have N parking spaces in a one-way street. Um, there's N cars and each car has a preferred spot. We'll call it pi I. And this is between one and N. And this is, uh, yeah, so this is the preference of car I. And so each car tries to park in order, so car I, parks at spot pi i if it's available. And if not, it just continues to drive um, past its preferred spot and just takes the first available spot. Um, and if it can't find any more spots, then it leaves the street. And so a parking function is just a sequence pi. So it's this n tuple such that all cars can park. And so we'll let PFN be the set of parking functions of size n. And so the first question we might have is uh, how many of these uh, are there? Oh, I guess first let's do an example. So uh, it's kind of clear that if you just have a n tuple of ones, then that can always park. That's always a parking function. But if you ever have a sequence with two n's, that's, they, that can never park. So here's the set of parking functions for uh, n equals three. So I've listed it out here. And so this has size 16. And so some observations are that, so this symmetric group of size n is always a subset of PFN. And you can see that parking functions are permutation invariant. So we can permute coordinates and it's still gonna be a parking function. Um, so by the pigeonhole principle, um, an n tuple is a parking function if and only if the number of coordinates that are at most i is at least i. And uh, equivalently, a parking function, um, so pi is a parking function if and only if the like rearranged uh, vector where you re rearrange it in increasing order um, satisfies this property where the ith largest um, value is at most i. So this is usually how I like to think of these. Okay, so the first question that one might have is how many, how do we enumerate these? So uh, Kahnheim and Weiss showed that the number of parking functions of size n is n plus one to n minus one. And there's a nice proof by Pollack um, deriving this. So how, how do you do this? Well, you can add an additional space n plus one and then you just arrange the spaces in a circle. And we allow n plus one to be a preferred space. 
And so what this does is that now all cars can park because we just loop around. And so pi is a parking function if and only if the empty space is n plus one. So essentially we can, okay, if pi one through pi n leads to an empty space i, then essentially if you add each coordinate by k, that leads to an empty space i plus k. So basically exactly one of these is a parking function. So we mod out by uh, rotation. And so we get this equation. And so that leads to this expression. And so something you might notice is that this looks a lot like Cayley's formula. Um, so the number of trees on n labeled vertices is n to the n minus two. And so indeed, uh, Fouad and Rorden established a bijection with trees on n plus one labeled vertices. All right, so here's a brief history. Um, so parking functions were introduced by Kahnheim and Wise. Um, what they're actually studying, studying was the hash storage structure. Um, uh, and so <clears throat> there's connections over the years, there's been connections to various combinatorial objects. So for example, uh, set partitions, hyperplane arrangements, uh, symmetric functions, abelian sand piles. And there's been a few variants as well. So um, there's U parking functions. Um, so instead of insisting that like pi i is less than or equal to i, we can do it for arbitrary uh, values. And there's also something called G parking functions where G is a digraph. Um, there's a generalization called rational parking functions. And these have connections to representation theory. And uh, they like to think about this in algebraic combinatorics. And another variant is we can park with variable car sizes. So each car might take up more than one space. <clears throat> and so probabilistic questions have also been considered, but these tend to be more complicated. Um, so here's some early results. Uh, so Chessing and Markert were able to find uh, connections between parking functions and widths of rooted label trees, uh, empirical processes and Brownian excursion. Um, going back to like computer science applications. So uh, Flagellet et al and Jensen considered these generalized parking functions. These are, um, these are parking functions where we have M cars and N spots, where M is at most N. And they actually studied something called the cost construction, also known as the area. So we'll talk about this later. Um, but this statistic uh, converges to three different distributions normal Poisson or airy, depending on uh, the ratio between M and N. Um, and more, more recently, Diaconis and Hicks studied the asymptotic distributions of coordinates, descent patterns, um, area, and some other statistics. So we'll do a, a brief overview of this next. And more recently, Kenyon and Yin extended the Diaconis Hicks results to the generalized and U parking functions. Okay, so maybe the simplest uh, statistic to consider is the, uh, the distribution of a single coordinate. And so by permutation and variance, we can just, it suffices to look at the first coordinate. And so Diaconis and Hicks showed that for fixed J and large N, 
um, the probability that pi i equals j is asymptotic to this expression, um, and the same for the probability that pi i equals n minus j. What is q here? So Q of J is the probability that this X is at least J. And here X is a, a Borel distributed random variable. So this is the, the, the uh, probability mass function. And so one can show that uh, we expect pi I to be uh, asymptotic to N over two. And so if we just look at the extremes, so the endpoints, um, the probability that the first coordinate is one is two over n. And while the probability that it equals n is one over e times n. So it's more likely to be a smaller value than a larger one, which should make like, intuitive sense. Um, and that this probability is monotone decreasing in J. And in fact, um, if you look at the distribution, it's actually close to uniform in the bulk. So for values between one and N. And so the proof of this depends on uh, something called a parking function shuffle. And we'll talk about that later. Okay, and in fact, the joint distribution of the first k coordinates are approximately joint uniform. And this holds for k uh, little of root n over log n. <clears throat> so the proof of this is due to Chatterjee and he bounds the total variation distance between sampling width and without replacement. So that's a result by Diakonis and Friedman. So here's like a picture of uh, the distribution of values of the first coordinate. So it's uh, it's decreasing, but it's approximately uniform uh, in the bulk. Okay, so. Um, so these parking functions are actually a subset of these things called mappings. So these are the set of functions um, from the set one through n to itself. So these are called mappings. Um, and so what's the ratio between the number of parking functions and the number of mappings? So it's uh, asymptotic. So it's of the order E over N plus one. And so we can think of a random parking function as a random mapping. Um, so this is a typo. So condition to be in uh, PFN. And so as opposed to random parking functions, random mappings are actually well studied. So this started with uh, Harris in 1960. He studied uh, various distributions. Um, and then Hansen in 89 was able to prove a functional central limit theorem for the component structure of the graph representation. We'll talk about this later. Um, and then Flagellet and Odlisko used analytic combinatorics uh, to prove limit theorems. So like the number of, uh, K cycles, et cetera. And Aldous and Pittman were able to find connections between like features on random mappings and fe features on Brownian bridge. And so it's natural to expect that um, the distribution of statistics in PFN, which we can think of as like a micro canonical ensemble should be close to the distribution of the corresponding statistics in the canonical ensemble in the superset Fn. So when when does this heuristic hold? So Diakonis and Hicks were able to prove the following limit theorems. Uh, 
So they looked at three statistics. Um, the first one is the number of repeats. So this is where the number of coordinates where pi i equals pi i plus one. So this is asymptotically Poisson uh, with rate one. Um, another statistic they considered was uh, the lucky statistic. So these are the number of cars that get to park in their preferred spot. And the number of uh, lucky cars is asymptotically normal. Then another statistic they looked at was the number of ones. Um, so yeah, so the number of ones is actually equal in distribution to one plus X. Here X is binomial with these parameters. And their proofs use uh, generating functions. And ran random mappings have the same limiting distributions for the first two statistics, um, but they actually differ in the third statistic. So if you let ni of pi be the number of i's in pi, um, then for parking functions, the probability that the number of n's is zero is asymptotic to one minus one over e, while for random mappings, it's actually one over e. So this already shows that there's a difference between uh, parking functions and random mappings. Okay, so um, for fixed n, okay, so let's fix n. Um, the two ensembles have the same distribution for descents, ascents, and equality processes. So what are these? Um, okay, so how do we get an exact equivalence? So we switch over to a slightly different ensemble. So this F tilde. So now these are maps from bracket N to bracket N plus one. And so for F in Fn tilde, we'll let X I of F be the indicator that there's a descent at uh, position I. So X1 through Xn minus one is the descent pattern of F. Okay, so um, Dikonis and Hicks showed that the, uh, joint the joint distribution of the descent pattern of a random parking function equals that of a random mapping. And so the same theorem holds for um, the ascent pattern and like the equality, the equality pattern. And so how did they show this? Um, so it's enough to show that the um, probability that S is a subset of the descent set of F equals the probability that S is a subset of the descent set of pi. And so what they did was, okay, let's let P be a post set of N formed from a union of disjoint chains uh, with order PC on each chain. And we say that F is P chain monotone if for all chains C in our post set P and I is less than J in this order PC implies that F of I is less than F of J. And so the key step is that they, they showed that the probability that both pi and F are P chain monotone are equal. Okay, um, so let's talk about the area statistic. So for a random parking function pi, the area of pi is n plus one choose two minus the sum of the, the pi k's. So the name area comes from, so in algebraic combinatorics, we think of parking functions as um, 
there's a way to think of them as dick paths. So the area in this case is like the literal area underneath the dick path. Um, in the computer science literature, the area is called the inconvenience or the cost or the total displacement. And what this thing is counting is this is the number of extra spaces that each car travels past their preferred spot to park. So you can use the results for a single coordinate um, and linearity of expectation to show that the expected value of the area is uh, big of n to the three halves. And so Flagellet et al showed that if you scale the area by n to the three halves, that converges in distribution to A. So A here is the airy distribution. And this is the, one way to think of this is that it's the distribution of the area under Brownian excursion. So Brownian excursion is uh, Brownian bridge uh, condition to be positive. And their proof uses generating functions and analytic combinatorics. So they use this thing called moment pumping where essentially you get, um, you, find all, you find all moments of this, uh, of this statistic. And then it's kind of like a method of moments uh, proof. Um, and they also proved uh, asymptotic normality for sparse tables. And here sparse means that uh, the ratio of cars to spots uh, converges to a constant between zero and one. Okay, so Diaconis and uh, Hicks uh, also um, explained that there's another way to, to do this. So here's another line of proof. Um, for x between zero and one, we'll let f pi of x be the, uh, the size of this set i, where pi i is at most n x over n. And it was shown by Chessing and Markert that for random pi, um, root n times this difference actually converges in distribution to brown in excursion. And so the, the limit theorem follows by applying the continuity theorem. And the nice thing about this, uh, this method here is that we can also find the limit distributions of other statistics. So one is the coordinate counts. And then the other one is the maximum discrepancy. Okay, so, so it turns out that <clears throat> these things called parking completions are gonna prov provide the link between like enumeration and probability. And to get there, we need to define what a parking function multi-shuffle is. So let's fix these coordinates pi L plus one to pi N. So these are like the, the last uh, N minus L coordinates. And we'll define the set A to be the set of L tuples U such that if you concatenate U and this pi L plus one to pi N, uh, this, this thing is gonna be a parking function. And so by switch of coordinates, uh, this pi will be parking function if and only if it's arrangement, rearrangement in uh, weekly increasing order is in uh, PFN. So we can assume that U is in increasing order. So this means that if this set is non-empty, then there will exist a unique maximal element. And this is in component-wise partial order. Um, we'll call that, so this is bad notation, but there's a unique maximal element U 
um, that satisfies this condition. And so this set uh, A can be written as bracket U. So anything that's, whoops, sorry about that. Right, so anything less than U in this component-wise partial order will satisfy being a uh, parking function. So given the last n minus l parking preferences, it suffices to find this, uh, this maximal element u. So uh, definition um, for l between one and n, <clears throat> we let this u be in, this vector be in increasing order. And so we say that uh, pi l plus one to pi n is a parking function multi-shuffle of these uh, L plus one many uh, vectors. So alpha one is in PF of U one minus one, alpha two is in PF of U two minus U one minus one and so on, all the way up to alpha L plus one. So these, these are each uh, vectors. So this is a parking function multi-shuffle if uh, pi L plus one to pi N is a permutation of the union of these um, L plus one vectors. So it'll be alpha one, and then we take alpha two plus U one, this vector U one, and so on until alpha L plus one plus this vector of U L's. And so we'll denote this as this vector is in MS of this vector. So that this is the notation. And so maybe a quick example. So let's let N be eight and U one is four. So why is this a parking function multi-shuffle of these two uh, vectors? Well, here's uh, two, one, two. And then we take alpha two plus uh, four. So we get uh, five, eight, oops, sorry. We get five, six, eight, and then four plus three, seven. Um, Oops, there, I think there's a typo here. Oops, this should, one of these should be eight. Okay, right. So then we take a permutation. So essentially this thing is a permutation of alpha one and alpha two plus four. So this is a parking function multi-shuffle of these two. Okay, so the main theorem is uh, this, or the theorem associated with multi uh, shuffles. So, Diaconis and Hicks proved this for uh, the simple case where we're only looking at uh, one, the first coordinate, and then Yin showed it for U1 through UL. So, the idea is that the set A equals bracket U if and only if this vector is a multi-shuffle of uh, this vector here. And so what is this uh, useful for? So let's consider the original parking problem. And let's say that, the, that L of the N spots are occupied. So we'll denote that by this vector V. So V1 through VL. And again, we can, by permutation and variance, we can assume that these are in increasing order. And so the idea is that, or the goal is that given that L of these are, L of these spots are occupied, what's the uh, number of ways to fill the, or what's the number of parking preferences for the rest of the cars so that they can all park? And so we'll call that set of successful preferences uh, parking completions for this sequence. 
So we'll denote that by PCN of V. Okay, so here's the, uh, the main theorem regarding parking completions. So let L be between one and N. Uh, let V be this vector V1 through VL, which we assumed is an increasing order. Um, then the number of parking completions uh, for this vector V is given by this very ugly equation. So it's the sum over vectors S in this ln of V, which we'll define shortly of n minus L multi choose S and then times this product here. So what is ln of V? It's the set of uh, L plus one tuples S such that uh, for all I in bracket L, uh, the sum from S1 to SI is at least VI minus one. And then when you sum up all the SIs, uh, you get N minus L. Okay, and the note is that this quantity is constant if all VI are at most I. And for once these VI increase past I, well, this thing is decreasing because there will be less resulting, uh, less sum ends. Okay. So what can we use this for? So now, okay, let's talk about the expected number of k cycles. So let CK of pi be the number of k cycles of a parking function pi. So you can decompose CK as a sum of indicators as follows. So you sum over all uh, k tuples alpha. Um, and then you indicate if alpha has is a k cycle of pi. And so as one might expect uh, for random parking functions, the expected number of k cycles is asymptotic to one over k. So we know this is, everyone knows this uh, holds for uh, uniformly random permutations, right? Um, okay, so it's not, the proof is a little technical, but it's not too bad. So by uh, linearity of expectation and permutation and variance, um, the expected number of K cycles can be, well, these are sums of indicators. So now we get sums of probabilities and we're ranging over all K tuples. And so, um, yeah, so we can assume that, uh, right, so maybe I should be a little more careful here. So the, the, the cycle is uh, like I1 goes to I2, I2 goes to uh, I3 and so on. And so by permutation and variance, we can just, shift everything to the first k coordinates. So this is the probability that pi i is i sub one, all the way up to pi k is i sub k. And okay, well, um, you, fix, you, you, you count how many um, cycles you can have in the first, uh, with, with just these values. So that's k minus one factorial. But then we have to fill in the remaining uh, number of spots, right? So that's the parking completion of this vector. And then of course, one over the size of the set. And okay, now we use the parking completion theorem on this piece here. So that's given by uh, this here. Uh, now, how do we make sense of this? So the first step is we do a change of variables. And then there's a few uh, technical computational 
computations and there's some asymptotic analysis. Um, I will skip that. Um, but basically we get uh, that the sum equals this uh, very, this complicated uh, expression here. Okay, so how do we actually handle uh, this expression? So it turns out that this expression in the bracket we can handle using uh, something called Abel's multinomial theorem. And we use a form due to Pittman. Um, so there's a nice way to, to simplify it and evaluate this. So at the end, we essentially get that this sum here is n plus one to the n minus k times n to the k minus one over k factorial. And then one plus some little o one term. And then we plug this back into the sum we had before and then combine and simplify, and then we get our result. Okay, so once we have that, um, now can we say something about the asymptotic distribution of cycles? And so um, our main result is the following. So, for a random parking function, uh, this joint distribution of uh, cycle counts converges to this, uh, this process of independent Poisson random variables. So yk is Poisson 1 over k. So this, is, uh, this parallels the results of uh, Aratia and Tavare on uniformly random uh, permutations. Okay, so to prove this, we actually prove something stronger. So we'll let W be this vector of cycle counts from one to uh, D, and Y is the corresponding uh, Poisson random variables. So recall that the total variation distance between two probability distributions is the soup overall uh, subsets A of the absolute difference of mu A and nu A. And so the idea is that you show that for all fixed D, um, this total variation distance goes to zero. And we actually get a, an error bound of uh, one over N. Okay, so um, the proof uses uh, Stein's method. Um, so what's what Stein's method? So this is a technique which was introduced by St Charles Stein in 1972. Um, he he did this for sums of uh, IID random variables, um, and it's typically used to bound the distance between two probability distributions. Um, though it has a lot of wide-reaching up other applications uh, now. And one major advantage of Stein's method is that it also gives you error bounds on the distributional approximation. And so this has been developed for many target distributions. So for example, the normal, Poisson, exponential, the gamma, etc. And there's many different variants. So there's dependency neighborhoods, exchangeable pairs, uh, size bias coupling, zero bias coupling, and so on. Um, we opt to use the Stein's method via exchangeable pairs. So what is uh, an exchangeable pair? So this pair of random variables, W and W prime, is an exchangeable pair if uh, W, W prime equals in distribution to W prime and W. And so typically how, the, way, the way we construct exchangeable pairs is to apply a small perturbation to the uh, original variable that we're looking at. So 
in our case, what we do is we apply a random transposition to our uh, parking function. So by permutation invariance, that will still be a parking function. And now we, so CK is the number of uh, K cycles. So we'll let CK prime be the number of K cycles of this, uh, of this uh, new distribution, or sorry, of this new uh, parking function, pi prime. And so CK, CK prime is an exchangeable pair. And then the, we actually use a multivariate version of science method. Um, we use the one due to Chatterjee, Diaconis, and Mex. Um, so this says, okay, we'll let W be this uh, random vector, size D, and uh, the expected value of WI is lambda I. And then we'll let Z be this vector of independent uh, Poisson random variables with a parameter lambda i. And okay, let w prime be um, w1 prime all the way to wd prime with w and w prime an exchangeable pair. Then the total variation distance between these two vectors. Uh, can be upper bounded by this sum here. So what's alpha k? This is the minimum of one and 1 1.4 lambda k to the negative one half. And here ck is, is we, we have liberty to pick what ck is. And then what are these two sets, a k and b k? So a k is the, is the set of um, yeah, it's the set of uh, WK primes. Okay, it's the set of um, Ws such that, okay, WK prime is just WK plus one. And for all J between K plus one and D, uh, WJ primes is equal to WJ. So we don't, it does not change for um, the subsequent coordinates. And something, the same thing for BK, except now WK prime equals WK minus one. Okay, so the proof is quite involved. So here's a sketch. So for fix K, what we want to do is to upper bound uh, the sum ends here. And that's going to involve getting expressions on P, probability A sub K and probability of B sub K, right? And uh, kind of a nice way to do this is to do it geometrically. So we actually think of um, parking functions as digraphs. So, um, Essentially, the digraph representation of pi, we have n labeled vertices, and we have directed edges from i to pi i. And each vertex has out degree one. So here's an example. So here's our parking function, size 12. And we can uh, draw it as a digraph in this form. So the edges are, are directed. So the idea is that um, the digraphs of these parking functions are essentially, um, you can think of them as, or they look like cycles with uh, trees uh, coming out of them. Right, so the digraphs consist of connected components and each component is comprised of rooted trees arranged in a cycle. Um, and so the idea is that we just want to count or determine uh, transpositions that increase or decrease uh, the number of K cycles by one. But we also insist that we do not create nor destroy any of the J cycles between K plus one and D. And so this is just uh, 
a lot of case analysis. So for example, um, for that uh, event AK, so let's say tau is this transposition AB, um, when does AK occur? So here's like some events you have to consider. So it could be that A and B are in different cycles, um, in which case if we, if A, uh, if the cycles that A and B are on sum, their length sum to K, then transposing just uh, concatenates the two cycle, two cycles. So now the new cycle has linked K. Um, another case is when A, B are in the same cycle, then uh, this transposition will break C, A into two smaller cycles, um, right? One of them will have length K and another will have length M minus K. Here M is the length of the cycle C, A. And in that case, there's a few more subcases to consider. Um, and there's some other cases where A and B could be in the same component, but they could both be in the tree component, or it could be that one of them is in the cycle component and the other is in the tree component. So there's quite a lot of cases to consider. Um, but in the end, we get an upper bound that uh, converges to zero. So, okay. So I have uh, two minutes, so I'll, uh, oops, I'll end with some final remarks and this is not the last slide. All right, so something, another statistic you can look at is the total number of cycles. Um, so for uniformly random permutations, this was shown to be asymptotically normal by Shep and Lloyd, and it has mean and variance log n. And for random mappings, we have the same asymptotic normality, but the mean and variance are one half log n. So there's actually half as many, um, or the length of the, the total number of cycles is half as many as in uniformly random permutations. So we can use our uh, result, our first proposition uh, to show that the asymptotic mean and variance for random parking functions uh, for total number of cycles is log n, order log n. Um, and we conjecture that asymptotic normality also holds. Uh, we conjecture that it's also one half log n. So our methods don't give us the, um, don't give us, uh, we suspect the constant is one half, but our methods is, are not strong enough. Uh, to get that constant. Um, so in a work in progress, uh, we're, we are trying to carry out this uh, probabilistic program for these things called rational parking functions. And these are connected uh, to, there's connections to dick paths, um, these things called core partitions and symmetric polynomials. So they care a lot about these in uh, algebraic combinatorics. And so in the Diaconis Hicks papers, or paper, they say, these are at the forefront of current research with applications to things like the cohomology of affine Springer fibers. So I know nothing about this, but it's exciting to know that there's, that people care about this. Um, so one can also study, probabilize the U parking functions and these G parking functions. So there's, almost no, res no probabilistic results on these. Okay, in another direction. So we observe that the symmetric group acts on the parking functions by permuting coordinates. And so it turns out that this action, this group action splits uh, PFN into orbits and there's uh, Catalan many of these, so CN. Um, so Armstrong, Reiner, and Rhodes um, were able to extend the notion of parking functions to general ref reflection groups, and there's absolutely zero probabilistic developments in this direction. 
Um, uh, the last thing is that there's a lot of research in uh, random pattern avoiding permutations. And so we can actually, the, the, the notion of uh, pattern avoiding parking functions was recently introduced by uh, Adeneron and Pudwell. And so another direction is to uh, probabilize these uh, pattern avoiding parking functions. Okay, thank you.